God damn. <laughs> Nezra is now one of the most broken Warframes in the entire game, all because of one augment. What's good, folks? It's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with an updated Nezha build video. It's been years since my last Nezha build video. And oh boy, we do have some fun stuff. So Nezha recently got a new augment with the Dante Unbound update. Divine Retribution. <laughs> what a name because damn, that's all I can say. Divine Spears, his fourth ability. When you shove these spears up enemy bum bums, whatever status effect damage that you deal to them is then spread out to every speared target. And when the spear explodes, it deals that status effect damage to everything and then multiplies it. So DE, let me get this straight. Melee influence was a bit too strong. You're like, okay, let's tone it down with some of the effects. And then recently, you stomped the dual Ecor's clouds from reprocking melee influence. And with all of those things that you've done, you're like, you know what? <laughs> let's just release this augment. It's a good idea. And let me get this straight. You're telling me an ability that has no enemy limit. Okay. Doesn't need line of sight. And now with its new augment, you're able to spread status effect to every impaled bum bum. It's called fisting. As if that is not enough, he puts the hand deeper. Those whose rectums have been ruptured. Let's can we use more sober okay. language? People are having breakfast I'm this sorry, morning. those whose behinds has been ruptured. Let's and then multiply that status effect damage. <laughs> so yeah, Neja can literally rupture some rectums. Oh yeah. So what are some nice combinations with this augment? One of my viewers and a member of my Discord came up with a very funny, funny, really funny. When I say funny, I mean 300 kills per minute funny type of build. Using Dante's Helminth ability, which is the Darkverse. What does the Darkverse do? Oh well, I don't know. Slash damage with guaranteed slash procs. <laughs> It, that, that gets multiplied and sent out to everybody. Yes, it's that disgusting. And this same loadout can be used with guns as well. I mean, you could put Roar, but then Roar doesn't have that much duration because we want to have lower duration. The reason why is because Spears is not a consistent ability. I mean, you can cast this ability and some enemies are speared and, and sometimes the speared have no enemies. Who, 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 who is inside this spear? Please. So if the ability doesn't go off, you would have to manually detonate it, which is then another animation that you have to press. So with lower duration, you tap this ability, it's done. So as soon as you cast, you shove the spears, shoot, done. Very simple, very easy to use. The second helminth is using Wrathful Advance. This is the look at me, I am Colervo now build. So yeah, two helmet abilities that we're going to be using, which is Dark First and Wrathful Advance. This is pretty simple, just like Colervo, but you do heavy attacks and you kill everything in sight. But first, let's go into Steel Path and take a look at the Dark Verse build. Okay, here we are in Steel Path. Now, here's the thing. There is a weird bug where the first ability doesn't activate right away after you cast your Divine Spears, which can be Quite annoying. And this is funny. This is after you build up your third ability charges. So after you forcefully press the button for a little bit, then it starts working. I, I don't know why. So hopefully DE fixes this. So we're just going to quickly take damage here. Build up our third ability. It's fine. Cast it. And then here we go. Press four and slash away at enemies. You do need to have slight line of sight with the first ability. Sorry, dark verse, which is on my first ability. You see, got the bug right there where I couldn't cast the ability right away. Right there, delay again. But once you get things going, you'll see that your kills are just going to go way high. They're going to skyrocket. Even with that slight delay. I don't even know who I'm hitting right now. <laughs> Alright, one minute, 200 and 
58 kills. Unfortunately, the map was a bit too spread out. But yeah, 300 kills per minute with this blowdown. It's insanely good. You have to realize that kills per minute were also dependent on the tile set and enemy spawns. That's, this is disgusting. Like, who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> and the best part is, I don't need any of my weapons to kill enemies. Until an Acolyte shows up, let's be honest, you can't impale Acolytes or you can't even impale Eximus units. But at that point, Eximus units just cast your Dark Verse a couple of times and then their Overguard is shred, as you can see. But if you want to use weapons, you can use weapons with this build. Here I'm using the Spectra Vandal, which is a slash weapon. It's going to bleed enemies fairly quickly. We're not using any dexterity arcanes or anything like that. However, I am using the Cascadia Flare, which is base damage when I trigger the heat status effect. And that's easily done with my Doriga. All right, here comes the Acolyte. When it spawns, you're going to see that we can't really kill the Acolyte with our Divine Spears. So the best way to do it, just, just use a heavy weapon like the Tonkor here. And get rid of it. Or use a melee, whichever one you want. There you go. This is with the Spectra Vandal. You can also do this with the Occupor, whichever one you want. Fairly clean. Shoot. And then they die. You get 2 million bleed procs. Wow, I had to reload at the worst time. <laughs> no! Stupid door! And now let's take a look at the Wrathful Advanced loadout, where I'm using the Hate. You can use whatever melee you want. I'll just say it's better to use a melee with better heavy attack wind-up speed, but it is what it is. Let me quickly show you how this works in Steel Path. Okay, here we are in Steel Path, showcasing the melee loadout. Press 4, 1. Big damage. I don't necessarily have to physically hit enemies because my pet will build up combo for me here and there. But if you want to, just hit enemies. Boom. Four. One. Big damage. I, did, I didn't see. How much was that? How much was that? Oh, 505 million damage. Ugh. These guys got viral. Woo, 160 million. Beautiful. Being held. Oh, 69 poggers. <sighs> Beautiful. Oh, crap, it's violence. Never mind. <laughs> this loadout does have a slight problem because. DE physics, like right there. And then there's, of course, auto melee triggering. Why is auto melee triggering with abilities? Please explain that logic, DE. All right, back in the order, let's take a look at the builds. But starting off with the Archon shards, two casting speed shards are a must, 100% must. If you have Tau Forge casting speed, even better, because it improves the animation of the fourth ability. You know how DE is with animations. They like to make them shine, but holy hell, it's a DPS decrease when animations shine. Casting speed shards, and I also have Matterai. So with a single transference, additional casting speed. Never let animations shine, because if you do, less damage. And the rest are energy shards, because I won't be running any energy mods on the build. Taking a look at the first build using the Dark Verse. In the aura, I have enemy radar for that additional enemy ping on the map because we're killing so fast, so quickly, you need to see where the next group of enemies are going to be. I do have control slide here to disable his slidey slidey augment and it just gives me some additional strength. I do have range at 265% with Archon Stretch, I'll get to that, Overextended and Augur Reach. All of this provides me as much range as possible and this gives Divine Spears a coverage of 50 meters. And of course, Dark Verse, 53 meters, duration at 13%, and this gives Divine Spears 1.5 seconds of uptime before it detonates and explodes. This is all thanks to max rank fleeting and a max rank transient fortitude. And having fleeting gives you efficiency, transient gives you some additional strength to counteract the negative strength that you get from overextended. Umbral, transient, and control slide for the strength. And of course, 
boom, we got Molt Augmented for additional strength and Energize. And let's not forget about the Augment, Divine Retribution. Finally, Equilibrium. Now, let me explain Archon Stretch and Equilibrium. And that takes us to the Deriga. Deriga is, of course, a Sentinel. It has an ability called Arcoil, which shoots out little electric coils. It's in the name. This Arcoil counts as an ability which then triggers on the Warframe to trigger Archon Stretch, which requires an electric ability. So yeah, Arc Coil, very important. This triggers Archon Stretch on the build. Don't mind Tenacious Bond here, this is for another build. But most importantly, Manifold Bond, Arc Coil, and of course, your Calculated Shot and Guardian. All this is to help with survivability. And Mystic Bond, pretty nice, so I don't consume energy after my Duriga casts five abilities, which can be any of these. And the weapon in question is the Hellstrom. It is modded for Viral and Heat. This is going to be important as well, for the gun build. So now talking about that gun build, and I'm using the Spectra Vandal, which deals slash and puncture. Very nice. It is modded for Hornet Strike and Cascadia Flare, just for some additional damage, because Merciless doesn't work with Divine Spears. And I have Hornet Strike here for the upfront damage. We have our usual multi-shot, fire rate, crit chance, crit damage, and yes, Galvanized Shot does trigger with Divine Spears kills, which is really nice. And finally, your Faction Damage mod. Otherwise, if you have consistent base damage proccing, then yeah, you don't have to use Hornet Strike. And if you want, I also recommend the Akikor or literally or any weapon that can bleed enemies fairly quickly that don't require an incarnate charge. All right, on to the melee loadouts. Just quite simple. Number one thing I want you to do is make sure that both of your guns have the Dexterity Arcane on there. Dexterity. Both of these give you combo duration. Okay, for the hate, you're going to use that evolution, this evolution for the heavy attack wind of speed, and finally, increased crit chance for even more damage. This is a scythe. The scythe force procs bleed on heavy attacks, so you don't need the status chance increase from this. Raw, raw power. That's all you have to worry about. Otherwise, if you want something a bit faster, definitely use a dagger. But of course, this gives bigger damage numbers. That's why. Taking a look at the hate build, the stance doesn't matter because it's a heavy attack build. Dispatch Overdrive for some speed when you heavy attack, which is really nice. Without it, it doesn't really matter. So you don't really have to unlock this. And we're not working with Tenokai. Base damage coming from Prime Pressure Point and an Arcane. Don't worry about it. Of course, Killing Blow. Killing Blow not only gives you base damage on heavy attacks, but also gives you heavy attack wind up speed. Pairing up with Amalgam Organ Shatter for even more wind up speed and critical damage. Now, if you're wondering why is there a difference here, this is because of my pet mod, which I'll get to. Reflex Coil and Focus Energy. All of this is to give me heavy attack wind up speed. Because without this, you're going to be losing a lot of combo. And yes, this build does rely on building up combo. Finally, we have Blood Rush and Prime Breach. Now, here's the thing. Prime Breach is actually going to be so beneficial for this type of loadout because Wrath of Advance can be very buggy with its hitboxes. So giving it extra range makes it easier so you actually hit enemies more consistently. Otherwise, attack speed would have been a way better choice. And of course, for the Arcanes, I have melee exposure. I am using abilities and I get free damage with corrosive. So this also helps me one tap acolytes. And remember when I said about the cat giving me some crit damage? Well, it is our Panzer Vulpophila. Not only does it give me more crit damage, but it spreads viral and helps me build combo. Let's take a look at that build. Swipe, Viral Quills, Tandem Bond. These three together will help me build up combo. I don't have to touch enemies with my melee, but the pet can do that for me. And now the critical damage is coming from Tenacious Bond. You need to have crit chance over 50%, that's on your companion that is, to give you that critical damage, final critical damage on all your weapons. And that's easily done with a bite. Everything else here is to help the cat survive and pretty much make it a bit more Durable. That's about it for the Nezha build itself. Again, a lot of range, similar to the other one, but in the aura, I have Swift Momentum. This gives me combo duration, additional combo duration, and heavy attack wind up speed, which is really good, especially for using something like a Scythe. My transient fortitude is two ranks off, just so I can have two seconds at least on Divine Spears, because casting Spears and then Wrathful Advance can be finicky because of the wind up speed. 
so you want to have enough time for you to cast spears and immediately follow up with a heavy attack. And everything else is pretty much the same. However, in the Arcanes, I do have Arcane Fury for even more base damage on my melee. So yeah, that, this, yeah this is Neja right now. He's busted. Especially with that new augment. Without the augment, it's just, eh, he's, he's, he's just Neja. Uh, yeah, power creep. Gotta love it. Anyway, folks, that has been it for me. I do hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And if you did, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching. And as always, a oh, peace. Bye-bye now.